Hey guys, Martin here from TSI and The Weekend Warrior. Slightly different video today, but I thought I'd do it anyway. Most people watching this channel are probably gun people, which probably means they're knife people and axe people and just boy stuff kind of thing. So, 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, obviously I'm not really doing Weekend Warrior or TSI kind of stuff. The company I work for, I do a lot of shipping and packing and cardboarding and bubble wrapping and general cutting stuff so i i use a knife all the time at work now by law of course you're not really supposed to have a knife in your pocket when you leave your work premises or whatever but there's definitely room within the laws for tradesmen or people that are using a knife for work purposes obviously cruising around down in the shopping center and service paradise and stuff like that you, you no reason to have a knife in your pocket but when you're at work a knife lives in my pocket now i've been through many a knife um got just a couple just from the the drawer here there's one in the car a lot of them generally are broken and worn out so for for years i used this little gerber pocket knife i guess you could call it a little liner lock um just a real cheapy Ended up losing all the screws, but it did its job. It's small, and it didn't take up room in the pocket and light, etc., etc. Cheapy, not phased about it. And then a friend of mine, um, Lee, who actually is the owner of GNA Tactical, the gun shop in Burley that I worked at for for years, um, in the states, Lee, he brought me back this buck knife from the states. And it was actually a half serrated and half blade uh, from new. And I have actually, as you can see, removed the serration section by grinding it away and reprofiling it. Um, so this one I used for years. And it, it's a buck. It's it's nothing fancy. It does say made in China in it, on it. It's actually quite heavy, but it's very thin. So this was in my pocket for years doing various things. And it, it worked well. Um, then after this one, I changed to a SOG, which was a liner lock. So um, you push it across, you know, to unlock it. But I just put the spine at the back here actually broke. So that one got retired. And then after the SOG, I got this bench made. When I worked at GNO Tactical, got this bench made. Um, couldn't tell you what model it is. I can't remember. Whatever. And it's been my everyday knife at work camping in the kitchen forever ever since it's super lightweight super thin s30v steel so good but not amazing can hold a nice edge but does blunt and pretty quick but it's crazy light so it's been in my pocket forever because it's so light and small and doesn't phase me in the slightest but obviously technically not legal come home from work have it still in my pocket if for some reason someone whinged that I had a knife in my pocket, not that they'd see it because it's a very, 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 very deep pocket clip. So you'd literally only see, you know, the top edge in my pocket. But anyway, technically you could get in trouble for that. So just recently on, you know, not just recently, sorry, but forever in a day I've been trying, you know, different, proper different, you know, work knives. Um, this is a Stanley one that I've had for donkey's years. Obviously, replaceable blade. Very simple to replace the blade. Just push it up and out, and it works well. Nothing, nothing wrong with it. Works well. Slides in, locks fine. But super chunky, really heavy, and definitely not something I'd have in my pocket. You know, daily business of work, in and out of cars, blah blah blah. I've actually had this one since. I went to college in 2006 because that's the scratch mark on it that I put on all my tools. So this one's robust, works great, will last forever, but super thick and not comfortable to be carrying and using at work. This one's fairly recent one. Actually, the second one I've had because the first one, the screws fell out and the side panels came off and it all fell apart. It's just a basic folder. It's got your normal kind of depression at the back here. So that's your, your locking mechanism there. Um, so yeah, it's a folding utility knife obviously it uses your standard blade but the weak link for this knife 
similar to the Stanley, it is way too thick and chunky to be in your pocket. It's not overly heavy because it's aluminium, even though that's spine steel. The biggest problem with this knife is this system here. The system where the blade sits in, this hatch folds up, and then this comes over the top and the dimple is supposed to lock into there, of which it does, but so often this comes undone. It See that there? It doesn't lock it in overly securely. So it's not particularly safe in my opinion. Um, does what it does, it exposes a blade, easily change the blade, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to sharpen the knife like you do with a fixed blade, etc. But I don't like this system. Now, my biggest preference of a knife, this one might open now. What's going, what's going on here? Somehow this one is just locked up and I can't get it to open. Oh, there we go. The biggest reason why I generally don't like these kind of knives is there's not enough blade exposed. Now, when cutting a sheet of bubble wrap off a big roll that I often do at work, I'll find that this section of the blade, or the non-blade, the holder, and this one here, catches on the bubble wrap and it grabs and it tears and it doesn't really cut. So a long blade where I can just whoosh, the bubble wrap because I've got all this blade surface and I don't have a an edge here that's kind of going to grab on things. This cuts bubble wrap heaps better. But of course I have to sharpen it and it's, and it's not really legal to have around. So this is far better for bubble wrap. These are better for cardboard. Replaceable, sharpenable is what it is. So popped up on Facebook the other day. This little new knife by Olight, as in the Torch brand. Now, everyone knows I... <laughs> I like my Olight stuff, whether it's the best torches in the world or not, who knows? I wouldn't say it's the best torches in the world, but they are really good value for money. They get really, really bright and they get really, really hot. Regardless of that, Olight, Olight now make knives. Yes, made in China. Yeah, what isn't? But this one's, it's G10. So it's the same material kind of as this. Well, this isn't actually, this is different again. Um, but this is a, to look like carbon. This one, the locking mechanism is this liner lock here. So you can see when I pull the knife out, the liner comes down. As the knife opens, it locks. And to unlock it, you pull the liner down and it folds. So you can essentially do it one-handed, blah, blah, blah. This O light, the O tactical UI has got a liner lock, just like the Olight, so the Benchmade. Bearing in mind, this is a $250 knife. This was, I think, $39. Oop, didn't quite lock it in. So how cool is that? So it's a folding utility knife, uses your same replaceable blades, has the liner lock style lock of the 300 or $250 knife is barely thicker than the super thin knife that I love because it's super thin. It's actually heavier than this one, but there's obviously two pieces of steel going on here. This one is steel lined. This one has got less steel in it, but this is the best of both worlds of a utility style knife with a bigger blade, because look how much blade is, is exposed in comparison to this knife. And as I said, these get caught on all your bubble wrap and grab and tear. And But this is a full exposed blade. It has the liner lock that folds it up, has your really deep carry pocket clip. This is, I'm going to use that really cheesy term, a game changer. It's brilliant. Flicks, oh, you can do it a little bit more aggressive than that. It closes down easily. It opens easily. To change the blade, you, you turn this this knob here as per the, the arrow. I have had to use a pair of pliers because it's so small I can't grip it. Of course, you could, have, you could run it looser and probably push it like this, but then you stand a chance of the blade coming undone. 
Um, so I, I'd imagine that's going to get all boogered up and marred up from using pliers on it. But so far, I've been using it this week. It has been brilliant. Really, really good. My only comment, and literally the first time I opened it and the first time I shut it, I pinched my skin. Because my little hands, my little dainty hands, as it comes down, it is literally the length of the blade to almost millimeters. I think this should have had an extra centimeter on the end, make the whole thing a centimeter longer, and then you got a centimeter of kind of little bit of protection to the hand. But all it comes down to is change of technique. Instead of just pulling the liner and flicking it all the way around and more than likely catching my skin there, which I'm not quite now, but release the liner and then kind of break it away from the palm. But that is cool. Now, the biggest reason why I've been trying to use these kind of knives is they're 30 bucks. Not phased about losing the thing or leaving it somewhere or dropping out somewhere compared to a knife I really love, a Benchmade $250 knife that I would hate to lose. Now, I've been using this all day, every day since 2017, and I haven't lost it. But I know one day it will happen. So a $30 knife that has all the perks of a full blade, but all the benefits of a replaceable blade, and it's thin, it's light, it's an excellent design, bar being a fraction short, for 30 bucks, I'm not worried about losing it. That is winning. Olight, you're on an absolute thing there. But there's another one that they're on to. Comes with this faux leather pouch, whatever. This is another one. This is even more utility utility box cutter. This is the O Tactical Pro, whereas this is the O Tactical UI. So this one is even more box cutter. So it's a slide out blade. Hang on, have I got it locked? Yeah, so there's a little lock here. Push that down and the blade won't come out. Push it up. And it's quite intentional to unlock it, and the blade comes out. So this one is, is more so a real work knife. Look how thin it is. Let me just close that down so I don't stab myself. It is crazy thin. Now this is titanium. So it's super light. Of course, super hardy, super rigid. Got the slide out blade and it can go just box cutter length. So half blade, full blade. So you don't have to expose too much of it. And of course, if you want to just run it even shorter, you could do for just nipping boxes. And then, hang on, it's not. So you push the button to release it, put the blade in, push the button in to lock the blade right in, and away it goes. So when it's fully slid away, you've got a bottle opener in here. Cool, if you're a drinker. You've got a little Phillips blade style screwdriver thing here, and both of them came with a lanyard to go through a loop there. I don't use a lanyard, but... So this one, really cool. Even more utility than this one, but for me, cutting bubble wrap all the time, I then went got ended up back at that catching on stuff and tearing and grabbing. This one's better for just slicing tape on a box and not going too deep because you'd only end up going, what, probably a centimeter deep as opposed to this one. If you're not careful, you can cut five centimeters deep, but different kind of purpose, different job, lockable, tiny, even more legal, if you want to call it that, than anything as far as a utility knife. But both are absolutely brilliant. This one's an easier blade change. Oh, unlock it, I've got easier blade change than this one having to unwind it and probably use pliers to do it. Um, this one's 
even kind of easier to deploy and use. But this one is thinner and even lighter and really cool. This one I think was a fraction dear. I think this one was 45. Still really cheap. Thank you, China. Titanium. Carbon, even though it's not carbon, it's actually G10 with carbon print. But both are superb. The biggest limitation of these is going to be these blades, like any um, razor blade, gets blunt really quick. So you probably have to be changing them semi-regularly. This one I sharpen on a paper wheel. So just over there I've got a bench grinder. And one end is a fairly coarse, um, say something like 1000 grit uh, sandpaper edge. And on the other side of it is a compressed paper wheel. So it's just purely for sharpening, kind of like a leather strop. This one... Um, there you go. I haven't sharpened it in a few days and it's still shaving me. Not, not perfect, but it will shave. Um, so, of course, I'd have to sharpen this weekly or depending what I'm, how much I'm using and what I'm using it for. Cardboard is the biggest killer of a blade. So if I slice up cardboard with this, I'll have to sharpen it that night. Obviously, these ones, I can just go to the, the thing, grab a fresh blade. Um, grab a fresh blade out. Chuck it in, and away we go. So, really, really, really cool. Very, very, very impressed by these. Um, this one, I think, is my favorite because it is even e e easier to use. This one's a little bit fumbly, probably more so in that my hands are maybe a bit too big for this one. Um, but this one gives the full blade. Now, that full blade... As we said before, being bearing in mind it's only an inch or two centimeters, three, two and a half centimeters shorter than my Benchmade, that is an absolute game changer. So Olight, well done. You got the O Tactical UI and the O Tactical Pro. Go grab them from, I think they're from Olight World or Olight Australia. Um, th there's no reason not to. If you use knives at work, packing, unpacking, cutting, blah, 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 any form of tradie, go buy these right now. Thanks, guys.